every military airfield has an emergency system to catch a jet should the worst happen. It's simple, efficient, and almost identical to 50 years ago. They've been experimenting at the Royal Aircraft Establishment near Bedford to try and catch a phantom. August 1970, and the birth of the jet Arrestinet. And here's the net they hope to trap it in. Technicians built a mock aircraft, the same size and weight as the original, and used cordite charges to catapult it into the net. The aircraft should hit the net, made of steel cable and nylon webbing, at around 150 miles an hour, and it should stop within 300 feet. This sequence in slow motion shows what happened. State one, state one, state one. Port crash, Delta 5, one POV, one ejected, Echo 7, and nil complications. Barrier 24, barrier, barrier, barrier. Barrier 24, barrier up. There are two main ways to catch a jet, and they're pretty much the same whether you're on an aircraft carrier in the ocean or a Yorkshire airfield. Hawks can be caught by nets, but on taller aircraft like Typhoons and F-15s, the wire across the top of the net would slice the pilot in half, not ideal. So they use what's known as the rag, a cable across the runway that the jets hook onto as they land. F-35Bs landing on HMS Queen Elizabeth, however, don't need anything as they land vertically. Back to the rag, the ends of the cable are coiled inside a drum either side of the runway, fitted to a shaft with paddles suspended in fluid. As the cable unwinds, the paddles rotate like a washing machine, creating turbulence which eventually generates enough resistance to bring the jet to a stop. Arresta Arresta Leeming Tower requests the approach cable, northern end cable, raising for emergency aircraft inbound. Flight Lieutenant Harry Lorraine, Officer Commanding of Air Traffic Control. It's impressively basic. Um, I think that's the, the term that we like to use, but it's because when you start introducing multiple things and working parts and moving parts to, to systems that work very well, when you introduce new ways to operate them, that's when you start finding problems. <laughs> The tornadoes uh, in their infancy had quite a few technical problems. They would often come back with, say, for example, a nose wheel steering failure, which means that when the aircraft has safely landed down, the pilot isn't assured in which direction the aircraft would, would eventually end up going. Uh, so in that occasion, they would take the approach end cable and they would come to a halt very quickly from their approach speed, uh, literally within about a 1,000 feet of touching down on the runway. We probably had a... Uh, an emergency with the, the, the Tornado F3 on average probably about once a week. And what about the barrier net? I've never seen a Hawk uh, have to engage with, with the barrier, f thankfully. In how long? Well, I, I've been a controller since 1993, so that's, uh, what, 28 years. Responsibility for the nets and cables on the ground falls to the arrester team. But if you're expecting them to sprint out with their heads on fire to stop a jet crash landing, I was, you'd be mistaken. We're a preemptive measure rather than a reactive measure. We don't do anything to, to fight a crash, if you understand what I mean. There's no rush, and that's imperative that they feel that there's no rush because that's when mistakes occur. You know, that, that rag and barrier will only work if it's put together correctly. It's the last line of defence for the, for the pilots that are up there. The guys and girls on the arrested team, their job is essential. Um, if they get something like this wrong, the configuration of the airfield or the maintenance wrong, then people can die. That's effectively, and they know it comes down to that. Air traffic control direct arrester as to which nets and cables need to be up and which down, and it can all get rather complicated. When we're in exercise season, which is in the summer, we'll have multiple aircraft landing sequentially. What we've got to then consider is what aircraft can fly with the rag de deployed, what can't, what can fly over the barrier, for instance, heavy aircraft. We can't have the barrier up. It needs the full length of the runway. If you're a C-17 or, uh, you know, a heavy aircraft, you need the runway. But it could be a C-17 lands first and then a Hawk lands. Some aircraft can roll over it and it'll be fine. But other aircraft can't roll over the, the rack. It will, for instance, a tutor, the front wheel causes it to bop up and it will get caught on the rear wheels. And then that's 
that's caused a disaster. The systems must be checked every 12 hours. They could be the pilot's last hope. They have to work. It includes things like checking the height of the net. As we know, if it's too low, it could slice through the cockpit. We operate fast jets that are very risky, very dangerous. Um, there's a high chance of something going wrong because of the, uh, the way that they're built and the way that they're operated. They are there for defence and therefore the, the risk to life is, is higher than usual. It's higher than what you would say at a civilian aerodrome. Hannah King, Forces News at RAF Leeming. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.